Hey everybody, you're listening to Kempire Radio. I'm here with, of course, Kempire Radio family, singer, songwriter uh, for so many different artists. You know, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Britney Spears, Brandy, Kelly Clarkson, Christina Aguilera, the list goes on and on. Uh, Claude Kelly is finally here as a part, the second artist that we've, that we've uh, you know, decided to cover here on Kempire Radio's Behind the Songs. Claude, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, man. Finally. I know. I'm a fan of the show, so I'm excited to do this. I, I, Claude, I know you definitely listen, because every once in a while I'll get a, a, a song request from you. <laughs> yeah, every, every, every now and then when I watch you uh, post it on Twitter, what you're saying, I'm like, nah, man, I need to hear some. <laughs> Today, I need to hear some, some boys to mention it. Whatever, whatever I'm in the mood for, I make sure that I let you know. You don't always play them. Oh, actually, you do always play them. Every once in a while, we have we, we, we kind of do a throwback. You know, you know, whatever I'm feeling. I like to play what I, I like to hear. So, luckily, you know, for the audience, is a variety. But, Claude, let's talk about, you know, the last time you were here on the show, we, 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 you know, we had a brief, you know, interview. But I really want to get in depth. How, let's start from the very, very beginning. You're a young guy, but you've made such a tremendous impact on the music industry. How did this all begin for you? What was your big break? Um, wow, questions are loaded questions. You know what? My big break was kind of haphazard and sloppy, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. It wasn't a plan. There was no plan involved. Um, basically what happened was I've been doing music my whole life, like writing and performing. And, and actually, not writing, I'm sorry, singing and, and, and kind of performing ever since I was a kid in New York. And mm-hmm. I went to college because... My mother's Jamaican, and she wasn't gonna have it any other way. <laughs> oh, and, um, I, I get that. <laughs> like we're going, to, we're going to college, so, so I, I had no choice. So I went to a music college, came back, and um, came back, and then basically was um, like, all right, I have to figure out a way to make some kind of money, or my mother's gonna look at me really crazy because, like I said, my mother's Jamaican. <laughs> so, um, I I just happened to just be hanging around studios and like hearing what people were doing, and it was like. You know, I had, I had some ideas, whatever, so I started getting confident enough to throw them out there and realized really quickly that songwriting was exciting for me and something I was good at. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to focus on this and make this work. Mm-hmm. So then I just started, like, grinding in New York City for, like, about a year or two. And then I, I, I got a few little tiny things here and there, but nothing really picked up until I finally signed a publishing deal in 2007. And then literally, um, and this is, this, is why I know, this is how I know God is real, is that literally I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore on my own. I need help. I need financial help. Um, God, just give me a break. And like, if I can afford enough money to get to California, I know I can make something happen. Mm. And I signed a publishing deal like in August of '07, mm-hmm. and which just gave me, it wasn't even a huge one. Just gave me enough money to like be able to travel to California, pay for a hotel, so I could get out here and grind. Mm-hmm. I am right now, by the way. And um, between September and December of that, of that of that same year, as soon as I released Control, literally all like all my dream collaborations happened within that. Like I I met Akon, I sort of I, I recorded songs with Akon. I got some of those songs I wrote with him, went to Leon Lewis, two to Whitney Houston. Wow. One of them was the Michael Jackson record. Wow. Um, that's huge. And that's all in four months. That's, that's as soon as I got my publishing deal. That's right away. Mm-hmm. So what it did was like it seemed I worked hard getting to that point, but then it all kind of exploded from there. Mm-hmm. And then from that point, like, you know, most people work all their lives to get to Whitney Houston. And so because I got it so early on, it freed me up to really be creative. And then so that's my pop writing muscles and my country writing muscles and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, right, well, cool. Let's try and go to, let's try Britney and Kelly and all that stuff now. So it's kind of a weird discovery story, but mm-hmm. it's my story, I guess. <laughs> and, and, you know, because, you know, a great question that I asked Andrea Martin, and, and I'll ask you early on in this interview, if you had to choose, because you say you started out more as a singer, but you've, you've created a, a life around your songwriting. If you had to choose right. between being a singer and a songwriter, which one would you choose? Well, that, that, that's not even a choice because for me to go hand in hand, mm. not, to, not to insult any writers that don't sing, mm-hmm. for me, I couldn't write if I couldn't sing. So the song comes, the song comes about because of my voice. Like usually I have to be able to... I have to be able to perform it to some extent mm-hmm. and to be able to record it and even shop it to someone. All my demos, both male and female, that you've heard out there or even or the final product came from me demoing it first. Wow. That's the Britney Spears record, the Kelly record, no matter what key it's in, Fantasia, there's, there's a copy of me doing it first. Mm-hmm. So for me, when I started writing, it wasn't like I put down singing at all. In fact, I sing more than most people do. I'm singing all day. If I write three songs a day, that means I have to record three songs. 
in the style that I want to hear it done by the artist in the end. Mm -hmm. So I sing all day. So I'm technically a professional recording artist as well as I am a writer. Mm -hmm. I don't put this stuff out at my own. I, I give it to other people once I'm done. Will we eventually get a Claude Kelly, you know, record, album, anything like that? Is that in the works? It's not in the works right now because I, I, I give so much of myself to writing. Mm -hmm. And kind of what I believe in is that if you're going to do something, you do it 100% wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. and, and when I work with artists, I give them all of me. Like I, I, allow, I allow myself to be vulnerable to their emotions so I can really give them the best song possible. Wow. But for me to do my own album, I would really have to stop a lot of what I'm doing now mm -hmm. um, to focus only on me. And I haven't been able, I haven't decided to do that yet. I'm not saying it'll never happen, but today it's definitely not a focus of mine. Mm -hmm. um, but I do feel like I, I eventually one day the, there'll be songs that I have that I feel like I only I can do the way I want to hear them done. Mm -hmm. And then you'll hear a Claude Kelly album. I just don't know when yet. I wish I had an answer for you on that. No, no problem. But you, you, you definitely have to let us know, though, of course, <laughs> when that when that does, does of happen. Of course. Well, well you'll have, you have to play the damn single when it comes out. <laughs> we, we really won't be friends. <laughs> Damn. Um, but the last time you were on the show, I asked you some dream collaborations. You mentioned artists like Pink, Mary J. Blige, Green Day. Um, have any of those come true or are about to come true? None of those have come true. Um, only only for like scheduling reasons and mm -hmm. um, and the time like the, the opportunity hasn't arisen yet. Um, mm -hmm. Pink, I, I'm a huge fan of hers. She's um She's she just had a baby, I believe. I, I, I I've never met Pink, so. She's one of the people I haven't met in the industry, but I'm a huge fan of hers. Wow. I speak highly for any time people ask. Mm -hmm. And um, met with Usher. We haven't actually worked, in, worked on anything yet, but we've actually met and talked about doing it. Okay. Um, Mary J. Blige hasn't happened yet. Green Day hasn't happened. But just one of my wishes. I'm, I'm definitely believing it's going to happen. I'm just waiting. You know, everything has its time for me. I never push things or force things to happen because when you do that, you kind of get disaster songs. So I, I, I kind of believe if it's meant to be, it'll happen. And when it happens, it'll be the bomb record. So... You know, one thing, you know, before we start going through some of the, some of your big singles and, and you telling us a little bit about those stories, one thing I, I thought was so interesting um, during our last interview, we talked about Bittersweet with Fantasia. You compared her to the modern day Aretha Franklin. Um, and, and I said it would be her comeback single. Um, I guess I could say that I was right, right? <laughs> Uh, you get a gold star because you did. I mean, I got, look, I'm, I'm very happy with that song. She, she got her first Grammy off of it. Yes. So I'm happy for her. She really, really wanted a Grammy. She felt like she deserved one, and she definitely is, is talented and works hard, and she deserved it. And she killed that song. So. Mm. We're right on that one. I'll give you that one. <laughs> we, we we talked a little bit about your your creative process, but let's kind of really get in depth. When you go into the studio with like a Fantasia, um, or Brandy, or Britney Spears, what what is that that experience like? What 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 is your focus? What how, what is the 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 uh, method that you use when you go into the studio to create songs? Um, you know what? I, I like to treat music. Well, I. Actually, my songwriting is only, it's like therapy. So, a lot, I mean, even, no matter how silly the song is I write or whatever you think, I'm just going to think different, think what I'm writing about is different than what your actual intention is. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's therapy. And, and, and I treat it as therapy for the artist as well. So the first question I always ask, no matter who it is, or to the artist or to the people around them is, you know, what's going on in their life? What's going on in your life? What are you happy about? What are you sad about? What are you angry about what do you want to change? What kind of relationship are you in? Are you happy? Are you in love? Are you heartbroken? Cause those, those are the things that help you to write the kind of record that will be meaningful to them and meaningful to, meaningful to the world and that they'll want to sing over and over and over again. So in all those songs, no matter how big or poppy they were or R&B they were, they come from a, like a place of truth with that artist. When I wrote Circus, I hadn't actually met Britney Spears yet, but I know it was right after the time that she had a huge publicized breakdown and the, the whole craziness and the, and the media was after her. And the, all I could think about was, I don't know this lady, but I do know that it seems like her life is crazy. It's like a circus. Mm. And so I was like, I'm not sure if this is going to really work or if she's even going to want to talk about that or even address it in that way in a song, but let's go for it and take a chance. And mm. luckily she did. And the same for Fantasia. At the time, I had no idea what the what her private life was or what, um, what was going to happen publicly after that. But we just had a conversation and she would say to me, like, you know, I'm, this, I'm kind of in this relationship, but, and, 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 and I didn't know which one it was, and she was like, I'm in this relationship, and I don't know if it's going good or it's going to go bad, and I, I'm, I, we're not together now, but, like, you know, it's kind of, and she said it, she's like, it's bittersweet because I, I, she's awesome, 
but he's not for me. And I was like, that's your song title right there. Mm. And oftentimes when you do that, what happens is artists talk to you, and even though they're not writers per se, mm-hmm. they, um, they give you the song without realizing they're giving you the song. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's, it's, it's very often that happens. I, I got in the studio with Lettucey, for example, and she was on, she, we had already done three records together, and she needed one more song, and it was her and Chuck Conley and I in the studio. And she was like, I feel like all these songs are really describing who I am. Each one is a piece of me. Mm. And that's your song. Wow. And, and that was the name of the you album. You don't realize. And so, so for me, it's like, it's, it's like therapy. It's like they're coming to sit on my couch and tell me their problems. And I try to sum it all up and put it together in a pretty three, three minute, 30 second package for them so before they go home. <laughs> well, let's say, you know, you just mentioned three of the songs that, I mean, three of some of your very popular songs, but let's kind of go behind the scenes of some of the other tracks that you've written. Um, I'm going to save some of the Brandy stuff because, you know, we're going to talk about Brandy in, in, in depth. <laughs> Brandy. But uh, Miley Cyrus. Love you, Brandy. <laughs> Miley Cyrus, Party in the USA. What's the story behind that track? Okay, this is kind of a long story to story. But uh, that song was originally for Jesse J. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesse J and I have written many songs together for her album. And originally when she was writing for her album, we wrote that song. Like I, like I said before, out of a show experience, she was... um in LA for like three or four months and as, as you know she's from London and mm-hmm. she gets complete culture shock for her so she was miserable um everyone's everyone's getting on her nerves labels get on her nerves um the city was getting on her nerves and she was like I'm ready to go home and so we were, we were talking about you know you know what makes it what does make her feel good and she was like oh man I was in this car and, and Empire State of Mind came on and I just started singing along with it, and that was awesome so we we're like okay let's write a song about how you have this culture shock, but when you hear your favorite song on the radio, you feel like everything's going to be cool. We mm. wrote part of the USA about that. And the li- and it was supposed to be her first single, and the record label decided they didn't think it was a hit. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, they thought it was, they're like, this is not it. And so they didn't even put on the album. They cut the song completely and said, we don't want it. Wow. And how did it end up with Miley Cyrus? And, cool. and so it ended up becoming Miley's first single because... By accident, they were looking for not. It wasn't for Molly's album. They were looking for a, a one-off song to promote her um her clothing line through Walmart. So it was a, a very exclusive song. wasn't supposed to get a whole lot of airplay or a whole bunch of publicity. And we cut it um, while she was filming a movie. Mm-hmm. Changed the lyrics from a girl from London to a girl from Nashville to tailor to, to make it like you know fit her her life. Mm-hmm. And it hit the internet, and within two days, it was like massive. Wow. Massive, massive, massive. It was a huge, massive. huge, huge hit. I think it's a big single to date, so I'm really proud of that. Wow. And since we were already talking about Jesse J, Price Tag. Yes. The story behind that. Song. Price Tag. Price Tag is, is, is uh, again, about Jesse J's frustration with um, the music industry and how people perceive her. She's a very real artist. I mean, despite what everyone else, all the image stuff, she's, she's a singer. She's a, a, a musical theater girl and a, and a true singer at heart. And she was just tired of like the state, the state artists, and and, and the, the bad vocals, and and people focusing on the image and not being focused on the fact that artists that were out there who really, really could sing, could perform, and weren't getting weren't getting love. So we were like, you know, it's not about the money and, and, and faking it like you in the club, popping bottles and shaking your ass like that's what you do every day because most people don't do that every day. Mm-hmm. So she's like, let's write a song about that. So that's what that's what Price Tag came. And Dr. Luke, um, the amazing Dr. Luke, produced the track for that one. And um. We kind of tried it, and, and we're, we, we actually went in there with the same attitude. Like, well, they're probably going to hate this, too, because they hated Party in the USA. But luckily, <laughs> they loved that one and made it her first single over here. Wow. Oh. It was, and it's, it's, yeah. it's been doing very well for Miss Jesse J. She's doing very well now. She's doing awesome. And she, I, I, um, I'm in LA right now for the VMAs are, are tomorrow. She's, she's like the house. She's performing through, throughout the whole show. She's doing all those songs wow. at the VMAs. So she's, I saw her yesterday. She's really excited. Wow. Um, I just, I, I just hope that um, that that more of the world and more of America get to get to like really understand her and see her because that that girl can sing like nobody. Mm. Like she is the real deal. Okay.